Praise God. It's good to be in the house of the Lord, isn't it, everyone? That's glad to be here. Say a good, loud amen. amen. Let's give the Lord a big praise offering. <laughs> Hallelujah. I love being in the house of the Lord. My mom, if she could, she would be here. Uh, she, as sick as she was, many times barely making it, she was here. Si mi mamá pudiera estuviera aquí esta mañana, por más enferma que estaba, ella siempre se esforzaba por estar en la casa de Dios, porque así nos crió ella. That's the way she raised us, uh, loving God and loving church since the smallest memory, las memorias más chiquitas. This morning, I'm, I'm going to go bilingual because uh, Pastor Barajas was not able to make it this morning. So bear with me. I will, voy a tratar de ser bilingüe. No está aquí nuestro hermano Barajas para interpretar. Y, y voy a tratar lo mejor que pueda uh, para no, no hacerlo muy largo esta mañana. Vamos a, a el mensaje que tengo esta mañana uh, es intitulado Tres negativos igual a un positivo. ¿Qué, qué título, verdad? The, the title of my message this morning is Three Negatives Equal One Positive. You may say, wow, this guy doesn't know math. <laughs> uh, but stay with me and follow me in the word of God. I always like to use titles that catch the attention. Three negatives equal one positive. And when I say negatives, biblically speaking, I'm not talking about something negative uh, in the sense of that it's a... Uh, that it's something that brings you down and, and discourages you. But in the sense of a, of, a, of a no, of a not able to be done, in that sense, not a yes. And even there, God has something to tell us, even in the times that God says no. Someone said that God always answers prayer, but he answers it in one of three ways. He either says yes, or he says no, or he says not yet. So uh, he's going to answer prayer one way or another. Amen. I want you to have your Bible open to Luke chapter uh, 4, verse 4. Alguien dijo que Dios siempre contesta la oración. A veces la contesta con un sí, a veces con un no, y a veces con un espérate. Amen. Pero él siempre contesta oración y lo hace a su tiempo y por sus razones y para sus propósitos. Lucas capítulo 4, versículo 4, si tiene su Biblia. Luke 4, 4 is where we're going to be reading the first scripture in just a few moments. Amen. Luke 4, 4. Jesus is, up, is being tempted by the devil. Está siendo tentado por el diablo, el Señor Jesucristo. And the devil comes to him and tells him, if you're really the son of God, Tell these stones, use your miracle working power and turn these stones into bread. Si eres el Hijo de Dios, usa tu poder sobrenatural y convierta estas piedras en pan. <clears throat> but uh, God was not, Jesus was not here to take orders from the devil or even suggestions. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesús no estaba en este mundo en, en ningún tiempo para tomar órdenes del diablo ni aún sugerencias. Jesús le responde al diablo. Jesus answered him saying, It is written, man shall not, there's the first negative, shall not, no, not, shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Jesús respondiéndole a, al Satanás le dice, uh, Escrito está, no solo de pan vivirá el hombre, sino de toda palabra de Dios no solo ahí está el primer negativo no no se va a hacer y tres negativos en el mensaje dice igual a un positivo vamos a ver uh, cómo salen las cosas positivamente al fin de todo the first thing I see here is a biblical truth that we need to remember in this negative that Jesus says no Men shall not live by bread alone. It has been said that you can go, uh, you you can't you can't go very long without water. No puede vivir mucho tiempo sin agua. Maybe ten to eleven days, diez a once días. But that you can go up to 30, 40 days without eating and survive, and, and before you pass away, your body begins to eat itself. Uh, 
And yet Jesus is saying, man shall not live by bread alone. Jesús está diciendo, no solo de pan vivirá. Entonces, ¿de qué, de qué, de qué está hablando? ¿De qué va a vivir el hombre? Si dura nomás 30, 40 días sin comer y se puede morir, he can die after 30 or 40 days. And yet Jesus is saying, but that's still not enough. He can't live with just eating bread. Uh, and, and, and that tells us about great powerful truth uh, that there is more to life than meets the eye. Uh, more than what we can see. In other words, there's more to this life than what we see physically. Uh, when we die, when we leave our body, uh, it's not the end. You don't just go back to the ground to push daisies up. No, that's what atheists believe, but that's not what the Bible teaches. Uh, we, uh, man has created a spirit in a body which produces a soul, or what we call a living human being. Uh, fuimos criados como un espíritu en un cuerpo que componen lo que llamamos una alma o un ser viviente. Our life on earth is finite, though. Es finita nuestra vida en este mundo. Es frágil y está limitada. Boy, we don't see that. It's more than at a funeral or when someone's passing away. That life is fr finite, fragile, and limited. I look at my mom. She's lost a lot of weight. She's not eating well. She's very fragile. Ahorita mi mamá está muy frágil, no está comiendo bien. She's lost a lot, ha perdido mucho peso. And the doctors have said that they've done all they can do. So they have her on hospice. And, and I look at her, and she was always fragile and, 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 and old, 93 years old. But as, as her body is beginning to wither away, it, it reminds me, we're not here forever. And, and it's not just old age. No nomás es la, es la ansiedad que nos lleva. There's accidents, there's sicknesses, there's, uh, there's homicides, there's wars, there's different things that we can be here one day and we can be gone another. I've preached enough funerals to tell people every funeral is a reminder that we're here on earth for just a limited time. We forget that in the busyness of life and in the planning and all the things we want to do. We start planning our future, we start planning and our retirement, I know uh, I was looking forward to retirement. I'm still working quite a bit, but I was looking forward to finishing with secular work and doing things, you know, and we, and we like to plan of all the good things we're going to do. We're going to do the things we like, but how do we know how long we're going to be here on this earth? We don't know. Only God knows, you know, so we have to keep that in the, somehow in, in our, in the way we live our life, not, not to live morose and scared. I'm going to die tomorrow, so therefore I can't live and enjoy the day. Not in any way, but at the same time, not going to the other extreme where we live it up like there's no, you know, the, like there's death is never going to come. You know, we've got forever and we've got to remember the spiritual things. Our spirit will live forever, either in heaven or on earth. Uh, Hebrews 9.27 reminds us that it is appointed for man to die once and then after this the judgment. We have an appointment to keep. Tenemos una cita para guardar. Hebreos 9.27 nos dice está, que está uh, apuntado que el hombre tiene que uh, morir una vez y después de esto el juicio, no nos vamos a escapar, todos tenemos una cita con la muerte y una cita con el Señor tarde o que temprano, eso es una verdad, and that's what Jesus meant when he said man will not live by bread alone, es lo que quería decir Señor Jesucristo cuando dijo el hombre no vivirá solamente de pan, hay más a esta vida que este cuerpo físico, pero vamos a vivir, no es el fin, you say by here and in heaven they say hello, Hallelujah. Amen. Aquí decimos adiós, pero en los cielos dicen hola. Cuando llega un creyente a, a la muerte y luego pasa la eternidad, hay, perso hay personas queridos que ya se fueron antes de ellos que servían a Dios y también ahí están el Señor para decirles hola, bienvenido a tu lugar permanente. And that's why, what Jesus meant. The next, the next negative we could call it is John 3.3, Juan 3.3. And, and, and Jesus is speaking to a religious leader named Nicodemus, and he's explaining to him about a very important uh, uh, spiritual experience that is absolutely necessary 
to go to heaven. The first one, Jesus said, was absolutely necessary for eternal life. The second one is absolutely necessary for salvation. So we could say the first one, uh, man shall not live by bread alone is the truth of eternal life. And now as we read John 3, 3, we could call it the process of getting etern that eternal life. Jesus answered and said to him, speaking to Nicodemus, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot, there's that word, either no or not, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Respondiendo Jesús, está hablando con Nicodemo, le dice, de cierto, de cierto, te digo, el, que el que no naciere de nuevo, no puede ver el reino de Dios. So la primera uh, palabra que leímos, no solo de Pan vivirá el hombre, explica la verdad de, de, de que somos seres eternos. Y el segundo uh, que leímos, no solo de que dice, a menos que el hombre naciere nueve, no puede entrar. Está hablando del proceso de ser salvos. Del proceso. This is the most important matter that we must deal with. People say, what is the most important decision you ever got to make? Well, who are you going to marry? Where are you going to live? Where are you going to work? I say no, not to all those. The most important uh, matter that we will ever deal with was, are we born again or not? Jesus said, unless you be born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. I don't care what church you belong to. I don't care uh, what religion you have or how good of a person you are. You will not see the kingdom of heaven if you're not born again. And that's just... Simple as that. Hallelujah. Es tan sencillo así. Si no es nacido de nuevo, no van a ver el reino de los cielos. No importa qué iglesia permanezca, pertenezca, qué religión tenga, o qué tan buena persona sea, no va a ver el reino de Dios a menos que sea nacida de nuevo, nacido de nuevo. Unless you are born again. It's a supernatural event. Nicodemus couldn't understand it. No lo podía entender Nicodemo y dijo, ¿cómo puede entrar un hombre y haciendo viejo otra vez al vientre de su madre y nacer? Estaba mirándolo físicamente. The way we could look at bread. We need bread. What does he mean without, you know, not by bread alone? But he says, uh, it's a spiritual thing. Es una cosa espiritual este nacimiento y Nicodemo no lo entendía. Nicodemus did not understand it. It's an event where the Holy Spirit uses the Word of God and does a spiritual transformation in our inner man. Look at what 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 23 says. It puts it very plainly. Primera de Pedro 1.23 lo Pone muy planamente este proceso espiritual, el versículo 23, siendo renacidos no de simiente corruptible, sino de incorruptible, por la palabra de Dios que vive y permanece para siempre. Espíritu Santo, usando la palabra de Dios, produce fe y produce la obra del nuevo nacimiento. Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. You see, the Holy Spirit takes the word of God and he uses us to burst faith within us and to do the work. It's a spiritual work in the inner man. Hallelujah. That's very, very important. Nicodemus didn't understand that, and, and I'm sure the devil didn't fully grab it when Jesus said, not only by bread man shall live, uh, but that's, that's a spiritual, spiritual matter that he is talking about. So that's another no, another not. You will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You will not live without the word of God. And the, the final not or no would be uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Hebreos capítulo 12, versículo 14. Es el, es el último negativo que quiero hablar. Que dice, no, no vas a vivir solamente de pan. No vas a ir al cielo sin haber nacido nuevo. Y no vas a ver al Señor a menos que cumplas este tercer requisito. Uh, this third requirement, and it's 12, and it's verse 14. 12, capítulo 12 de Hebreos, versículo 14. Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see God. Seguir la paz con todos y la santidad 
sin la cual nadie verá a Dios. Eso me enseña que es absolutamente requerida. No hay ninguna manera de decir, bueno, voy a hacer una excepción. I'm going to make an exception. I'm going to give you a waiver on holiness. No, no, no waiver. It just, I like the way the NIV says it. Listen to the way the NIV puts it. It says, make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see God. Now, you might say, well, wait a minute. How does this work? We need to be born again to see God. Now here it says, without holiness you won't see God. Is it adding another requirement besides salvation? Uno diga, pues uh, primero uh, dijo Señor Jesucristo, a menos que nacieres, no puedes, nacieres de nuevo, no puedes entrar en los cielos. Ahora parece que le añade otra cosa. Sin santidad nadie verá a Dios. It, it's talking about the result of salvation. Está hablando del resultado de la salvación. At salvation, at salvation, holiness is something we receive. Al momento de salvación, la santidad es algo que recibimos instantáneamente. También llamada santificación, also called Sanctification. But after salvation, holiness is something we pursue. That's what it's saying here. Pursue peace with all men and holiness. Pursue it. Pursue it. So it's a process. Sanctification, holiness is both instantaneous, a gift from God the moment we're saved, and then it's also a process, something we live out the rest of our life. Why? Because in this world, we have an enemy of our souls called the devil. And the minute you get saved, it puts a bullseye in your back, a target. This one is, needs to be taken out. You need to steal, kill, and destroy everything that he's gotten from God. It's no, it's no, it's no uh, made-up false tale or no joke that, about the devil that he's trying to take everything we have from us. So until we go to be with the Lord, the devil will try to steal to take away everything that God gave us. So sanctification, holiness, is something that we pursue. We are saved. Uh, we are not saved by works, but they are evidence of a Holy Spirit, of the Holy Spirit living and working in us. What did Jesus say about false prophets? He said, by their what? You will recognize them. By their fruit. ¿Qué dijo el Señor Jesucristo de falsos profetas? Uh, dijo, por sus frutos lo reconoceréis no no somos salvos por obras pero las obras son evidencia que el espíritu mora en nosotros y está produciendo fruto I, I, I doubt a person that says I'm saved I love God just as much as you do and they're living in adultery they're living in homosexuality they're robbing they're stealing they're lying they're living just like everybody else but they call themselves a Christian something's wrong there there's where's the fruit uh, the That Holy Spirit produces. See, when we get saved, the Holy Spirit comes to live in us. And he starts producing that fruit if we allow him. If we get worldly, and that's where the progressive sanctification comes in, where we watch ourselves. If we neglect that great gift that we have in us, the devil comes to really just cover it over with all kinds of distractions. And, uh, and we can lose what we have. Uh, We are to be separated and consecrated for God as the bride is for the groom. When the bride uh, is, is asked for, the, the, the groom asks for her hand, the, the boyfriend asks for her hand, and they enter into engagement. That engagement period is a time of you give a ring, and what do they call that ring? They have a name for it, is it? Engagement ring, which the word means connected in a way. To be engaged means to be connected. And you make, you make kind of like a promise, an oath to each other. And, and, the, and the, the, the bride to be says, I'm going to wait for you. And, uh, and the groom to be says the same thing. I'm going to wait and to keep themselves pure. And that's, that's the way it is with God. We have that period until we face God, until we see him either by death or the rapture. And we are 
preparing ourselves, maintaining ourselves pure for the Lord. Our salvation is there, but uh, we just the way we, we came to the Lord of our own free will, of our own free will, whether we realize it or not, through neglect and carelessness, we can lose that which God has given us. I know there's some people that don't believe that, but believe me, you're not going to be in heaven unless you want to be in heaven. And <laughs> the, the way you got saved because you wanted to be saved, that's the, only, that's the way you're going to make it to heaven. No one's going to make wake up in heaven and say, oh, well, look at that. How did I get here? You know, nadie va a despertar en el cielo y decir, mira nomás cómo llegué aquí. Solamente aquellos que quieren ir al cielo, que hacen el esfuerzo, y aquellos que quieren ser salvos. Todo es por nuestro libre albedrío. Let me conclude with this this morning. Knowing, understanding, and embracing these three negatives in our life. Again, that you shall not live by bread alone, that you shall not see the kingdom of God, and that you will not see God if you don't without holiness. And knowing and understanding and embracing these three negatives in our life will produce positive results of a life that is fruitful and pleasing to God. Uh, conociendo y entendiendo y abrazando estas tres cosas negativas que no solo uh, de pan vivirá el hombre, si no naciera de nuevo no verá el reino de Dios y sin santidad no va a ver a Dios cuando abrazamos estas tres negativas en nuestra vida, producen resultados positivos de una vida fructífica y, y, y agradable a Dios. Uh, it will keep us on the path to heaven. Neglecting any one of these things can doom us spiritually. There's nothing. Let me repeat that. There's nothing we can substitute for these things. Quite plain. Salvation is really quite plain. It's people that make it, uh, that make it complicated. That's what the Pharisees did with the message of God. They kept adding and adding and changing and changing until uh, they had something almost totally different but really being born again knowing that we're not in this earth forever we're we're finite we could be here today and be gone tomorrow remember i preached last week you can have everything now and lose everything i mean i keep thinking again of the journey with my mom we were having a delicious uh uh spaghetti dinner with the rolls and everything about three Sundays ago and who would know that the following Monday she would get a pain así estábamos con mi mamá comiendo una comida de spaghetti muy contentos hace tres domingos y quien iba a saber que el siguiente lunes iban a empezar una jornada a donde estamos a hoy las cosas cambian así así I mean we know that they can change but we, we forget until we're reminded when it happens and that began the journey to where we are today and My mama says, has been a woman of great faith. Ha sido una mujer de grande fe. Que she's not afraid of death. She is ready to go with the Lord. And she reminds me of that. Mijo, uh, we're just passing through this earth. Heaven is our home. Keep that in mind. Guarda eso en mente. And boy, this is a uh, great reminder. Mi mamá dice, nomás estamos pasando por este mundo. Vamos al cielo. Guarda eso en mente. Allá uh, nos vamos a juntar. Nos vamos a ver todos un día. Eso nos da un perspectiva correcta. That gives a correct perspective of this life. You're here. Enjoy it. Work for God. Do things for God. If God says, hey, tomorrow I want you in heaven. You don't say, oh, but wait a minute, I haven't gotten married. Wait a minute, I haven't made a million dollars yet. Wait a minute, I don't have my title yet. Wait a minute, God, I still want that brand new car. Hey, God says you're here, you're here, enjoy it uh, for his honor and glory. God says, hey, it's time to come home. Uh, you don't have anything that you say, oh, can you just wait one more day, Lord, please? No. <laughs> I'm ready, God. Whatever you want, Lord. Everything I have, like I said last week, is God's. My money, my house my family, and even my own life, you know. When you live that way, you always, you can say like the Apostle Paul, for to me to live is what? Is Christ. And to die, gain. Can you imagine that? You never lose. To live is Christ and to die is gain. What an attitude. Amen. And I'm gonna sing in the name